All right, so this week we're on chapter 24, I think is the chapter that we're on, and we've got a lot of good stuff this week, which I'm really excited to get to. It's unfortunate that I try to keep these under 10 minutes so that everybody's uh, attention span can at least watch something for 10 minutes, uh, because there's so much in this section uh, that I want to talk about. First, though, I want to hit, uh, hopefully everybody has taken the Unit 2 test. Um, I think I've graded everything, and it looks like everybody did a really good job. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that um, you're doing the feedback piece because it helps me to change the test as we move through uh, to fit everyone's needs, and hopefully so that you're able to do better on the test uh, from uh, test to test or exam to exam. Okay, Let's get into uh, a, a few of the themes that I want you to pay attention to this week if you haven't already read. I realize that it is Wednesday that I am uploading this, um, but I would, I'm would i really hoping that you're able to find, uh, if you have already read, some themes uh, that I'm going to go over and you can go back and reread them if you need to or uh, hopefully you've got all the information that you need so far, which would be great. Uh, first, we're moving into the 20th century, and there is an explosion of science, history, and philosophy that comes out of the 20th century. Um, there's a couple of factors that we need to look at as you move through this section and, and really looking at all of the pieces together. But really, the, the main theme here uh, is this explosion of science, history, and philosophy. One of the big things is that it challenges Christianity. Okay, and that's I, I want you to, to be able to see that for what it's worth. That in challenging Christianity, um, you may start having people who are deciding that maybe Christianity isn't the way that they want to go because they're seeing things through a different view. Okay, um, really, philosophy and science and history, uh, I think, don't make people question. Uh, Christianity it just challenges it it has it, it makes you think deeper and analyze your faith if that's what you're looking for in this and that's the time period that we're really looking at is the 20th century uh, rolling into the 20th century and looking at this idea of um, maybe Christianity wasn't something that I thought it was prior okay and that's just that's an idea of challenging Christianity uh, with a few of these things the other one is the nation-states also posed a problem to Christianity now this one I think is is more fascinating. We get the idea of science, history, and philosophy questioning or challenging Christianity, but nation states, how do they do it? That you're gonna find in this section that nation states um, start to become uh, a, a religion, okay? Whether that's Christian or non-Christian, uh, you're getting nation states who have come together collectively, and instead of saying, well, uh, we can all be different religions, they're starting to set up state religions, nation states, they're becoming more or predominantly uh, a certain religion, okay? Uh, I don't think that's something that's new, it's something that's been going on for a long time, but the nation state really uh, poses a problem for Christianity, especially missionaries going forward, or people who maybe think differently. Um, you don't want to join their particular sect um, if you want to continue to be part of that nation state. And it's not like anybody's kicked out, but you're going to want to see, look at some of those things as you read this week. Um, I think for me, it's, it's exactly uh, the same as the United States. We have, uh, we're predominantly Christian uh, nation. And so you have these other factions uh, or other religions that, that come into to play. Uh, but for the most part, you're a Christian, and that's the way that it works, which I find fascinating that the United States is, is set up a lot like this um, in a collection of states, right? I mean, we have a lot of different places across the, the United States, different regions and zones um, that could potentially be different. And I think that you could make the argument that they are, uh, with the South being predominantly one sect of Christianity and obviously the Pacific Northwest being a completely different, okay? And and I think a lot of people have made that, that claim as well. So as you look, read this week, um, as you read through it, look at some of those themes and how na the nation state potentially poses a problem for Christianity and then how history, science, and philosophy uh, poses or challenges Christianity, okay? Next is the the explosion of philosophy and what we're getting out of that philosophy. You have Nietzsche, Freud, Weber, who are all coming up with these ideas. Uh, the first is, uh, are humans rational? Can humans be rational? 
Um, that's an interesting question, and, and I think that you get uh, varying degrees of if humans can be rational in this section from these philosophers. I'm not certain that I know where I stand on some of these uh, issues, but I think that as you work through this, one of the things that I'd like to see is that you found a way to come to terms with some of these things that Weber, Nietzsche, and uh, Freud are talking about. Okay. Uh, the next, Weber does a really good job of, of asking the question, can politics be rational? Um, uh, I think if we were to bring this into uh, connection with today or look at it from a more contemporary view, we may see that politics isn't rational. Um, I, th I think it's interesting some of the debates that we're having in our political system and uh, if if we really can be rational or if it's all emotional or, or how we can look at those things. And I think this is a great time to be reading uh, this section and trying to figure out uh, what how, how you think or how you can incorporate some of these things into those, uh, some of these theories into your own ideas and values, okay? Uh, all of these questions, though, come down to one thing, and that is that we are now questioning uh, the rational views of the Enlightenment. And we are moving beyond the Enlightenment at this point, and hopefully uh, you saw this coming. I mean, it's not a... Uh, not a surprise by any means that we're ending the Enlightenment and getting through some of these things uh, as we look towards rational thought and can people be rational. And, uh, and I'm not certain that the Enlightenment uh, is rational views, right? Anyway, and we, and we see that. But it challenges the Enlightenment altogether. Okay. Let's move on to uh, racial theorists. Um, you get racial theory uh, that comes into play at this point in time. Okay. Uh, Europeans begin to believe, and they're coming up with a lot of science that uh, suggests that they're correct, um, that Europeans are better than uh, non-Europeans, Jews, and ethnic minorities. Now, uh, I, I'm just going to throw this out here, surprise, they are not, okay? Um, we have a lot of science today that, that proves that this is, this is wrong. What I really want you to take a look at, though, is how this is going to create more problems going into the 20th century. Okay, um, this is going to fuel uh, the the anti-Semitic views uh, of people throughout Europe, and that's going to cause an issue. This obviously makes its way across the Atlantic to the United States, and we have an issue there as well. Um, one of the things that I want you to see, though, and it's something that I try to make sure that we focus on throughout my in-person courses or online, is that the, the book explicitly states that race is a social construct. Okay, uh, It's something that we have an issue with, that we've come up with on our own. Uh, there is no basis for races. Okay, We all are all part of the human race. And it doesn't really matter uh, either way, whether you're Indian um, or Native American or African American or African uh, European. Okay, we're all human, and that that there is no ra races, right? That's a social construct, um, and I hope that you get that out of the book under the heading of racism. I think is is where that's at. Um, so hopefully you'll take a look and, and read some of that. I will guarantee you because that's my area of study, that there will be a question um, to do with race in the 20th century. Okay, So make sure that you focus on uh, that theme this week. Lastly, feminism. I'm excited that we've gotten to this idea of feminism in Europe. Um, in my U.S. history course this term, we're already to feminism. In fact, we've passed the 19th Amendment, which gives the women right to vote. And so here we are uh, in Europe. Uh, we're a few chapters behind them, uh, my U.S. history course, but we're getting into this idea of women's suffrage and the women's right to vote. Okay, Women are looking for equal rights. And that pushes them to rethink marriage, okay? Um, it necessarily isn't rethinking should I get married or should I not, but more women are able to opt out of marriage that we haven't seen uh, since, what, the 16th century, uh, where people, women could become nuns and go to convent, convents. So uh, take a look at that this week as you, take, as you read through the text. Uh, really what I would suggest is that that what they're asking for is a uh, maybe a look at traditional gender norms uh, they're wondering if women with equal treatment 
uh, maybe could do other things that a man would do, and men could do things that a woman could a woman could do. Um, I know I've got an opinion on this, which I'll keep it to myself, but take a look and see how that fits in the 20th century with your views today, and have we moved beyond that or not? Uh, I don't think that's what the question is this week in the uh, in your essay, but take a look at it, see what you get out of it. Hopefully, uh, you're excited about the reading when I talk about uh, political theorist, racism, and feminism. Honestly, you can't have a better chapter uh, than this week's chapter 24. I hope you have a good week. We'll talk to you later.